What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it on. It's connected to that monitor. Okay, so the case is off, so you'll be able to see the bearings on these hard drives are so good. There's no, like, wobble and you can't. If you're running at 10,000 revs a minute and you've got, like, a less fractions of a human air distance between your heads and the surface. Okay, so I'll just turn it on. So that's... You can't even see it moving. It's so highly polished. The great mirrors, actually. Uh, if you want a shaving mirror or something. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have to wait for it to time out because I haven't got a keyboard attached. Um, <coughs> it's because I turned it off by holding the button in. So it's booted up. Okay. Um, the heads didn't really move much to get that program up. But it had to load a program from the hard disk. Remember that we said the CPU was only connected to the main memory so anything that executes has to be in main memory so it had to be loaded right so now it should start booting up windows and you can see how fast that's moving it's actually quite quiet that one so it is actually working at the minute oh this is a really old monkey computer <laughs> from ages ago I don't think it's ever been connected to the network. It doesn't look like it anyway. So they said loads of people created accounts on it. Let's just get a mouse and click on one. That doesn't sound very healthy, does it? Oh, uh, I have no idea. What the Anyone not got a password? Why would you put a password on this? I have no idea what the password is. Now. No, I didn't forget the password. What does it do when you ask for a help? Gives you a hint. Password. Oh, hang on a minute. Keyboard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought I'd pull the mouse out. Why can't I make them different colours like they used to be? Why do you think the hard disk head just went mad when I plugged that in? Right. Yeah, because it's trying to find the driver, isn't it? Because it wasn't using it, and it's gone, oh no, I need to load the driver for the keyboard. Which you normally see happening, you get that silly thing wobbling around in the task manager, don't you? The task bar. But obviously because we're on this screen... Is it working? Yeah, right, so the password was password, apparently. Nope. Oh, I wonder if it was all lower password is password. Yes. That's how you hack. We're <laughs> <laughs> in. Let's go and get all those customer account details. But that, that is what a lot of hacks are down to. Really sloppy policy on passwords. And there you go. So let's load a program and see how fragmented this is. Um, Let's love Microsoft Word. Please write Relic Comfort Word 2000. So you can see it's actually, you see it quite moving quite a lot, but you, it's, it looks like it's like blurring, because it's moving little amounts between the tracks. Um, it's amazing how much it's having to move. Because it's not just working with I'll leave it as dot one. It's not just working with that one program. There's loads of programs. Oh, everyone remember the office assistant? That was a... They got binned, didn't they? Yeah, you got like a paper clip and everything, and I think there's probably a scary clown face or something. Get off the computer! <laughs> sort of thing. Um, so all those programs are running. Generally, they will be in memory, so there shouldn't be a need to keep flicking to the hard drive, but there is a system on the computer called virtual memory, which allows you to extend how much memory you've got. So sections of stuff that's not currently being used gets dumped into what we call a page file, um, which is just a temporary on the hard disk. And that frees up memory to load something else up. If you didn't have that, you wouldn't be able to work on massive files. So when you're doing video editing, you might be working on a file that's 10 gigabytes 
and you might not have 10 gigabytes of RAM, but you can still edit it. It just loads in chunks as it goes. That's when you start needing fast hard drives. That's when you want SSDs, because it makes a massive difference when you're video editing. Uh, let's just load another program, and then uh, what should we load? What have we got? Something ridiculous. This is the days before we had Adobe and things like that. We didn't have much on these. Front page, and that's no PowerPoint. That's a stupid program. Look how quick stuff used to load. It's crazy, isn't it? You get your, you get used to it. My God, PowerPoint normally takes age. Oh no, I don't want PowerPoint. I want Publisher. PowerPoint. Oh, I hate that program. Let's try Publisher. Oh, we haven't got Publisher. Mm -hmm. Front page, the world's worst web editor. It's amazing how the interfaces have changed. Uh, file, open, nothing, no templates, no nothing. Awful program. What version of Internet Explorer was it? Oh, it's not connecting to this because it's not connected to the network. Where's the about thing? There's no idea. Work offline. So this is when Windows Messenger was embedded into Internet Explorer as well. That's probably about Internet Explorer 6 or something like that. Can't remember now. But there you go. That's the proof that actually there is something moving in there. That's why hard disk is moderately slow because there's a mechanical process. Okay, mechanical processes are always going to be slower than just pure moving electric about and flicking switches, which is why SSDs are a lot quicker. And the other thing is, there's obviously a time difference depending on where the data is. So if my head's on the outside and my data is stored on a track. Feel the air coming off that. I'm not going to destroy it. I have a temptation of going like that, and, but I won't do that. Um, yeah, so if the head's got to move a considerable distance, that's going to take longer depending on how far away the track is. Okay, so when the operating system is saving files, it doesn't just try and dump them all in the same place, it tries to spread them to make best use. When you come to SSDs, it's irrelevant. They work a little bit like random access memory, it doesn't take any different to access a different location. So it doesn't matter where your data is. So eventually these things are just not going to exist. And we're just going to, everyone's going to be running off SSDs. Less moving parts, i.e. none. There's no moving parts in SSD to break. That's got a load of things that can break. Okay. All right, let's put it out of its misery and see, see what it has to do to turn off. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why they do it, and then it goes back to colour again, yeah. doesn't it? Once it starts shutting down. I never understood the point in that. The head's gone right into the centre. Park, that is called. So that if there is a problem when it starts up, it doesn't destroy any data. What you used to have, hard disks are a lot better than they used to be, but what you used to have, you used to, you used to have to, when you turned your hard drive off, before you turned it off, you had to issue a command, park the heads. So it moved the heads to away from the surface. Because it would actually, once the drive stops spinning, because it's spinning, there's a little bit of air that makes the head float. All right, so it has to go into the park position. But if you could just turn a hard disk off, and it could be in the middle of the drive, so that the next time you start it, I did this to the school one when I was doing it because I was helping. <laughs> um, I forgot to park it. I just turned it off, and I thought, oh no, just let. and we turned it back on, and all we could hear was <laughs> as the heads eventually came off the surface of the disc but left a big gouge and destroyed it so we had to get another one all because of me because i was helping okay. right there you go okay moderately interesting i would think